Morning crew, and welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, um, for quite some time, I've been really interested in using oscilloscopes, and I do try to include them in uh, some of the videos where applicable. And very recently, I uh, came across an issue um, with the cooling fans on ATVs, and they are really, really important, obviously, because if they fail, then the ATV is going to overheat and it could render the rider stuck in the middle of nowhere with a bike that he can't ride because obviously it's going to damage the engine. And I wanted really to come up with a, some kind of a test where you could actually inspect uh, a fan that's still sort of operating, so to speak, but to check its sort of integrity. Is it working correctly? What's the condition of the motor on that fan? And it sprung to mind that I could measure amperage draw of that motor whilst the fan's running. Then we could look at the uh, basically the draw, the, the graph that the oscilloscope produces and determine from that if there's any points of high resistance on the commutator, you know, where the brushes make contact, because that's usually uh, where problems occur if you get water inside a motor. And with ATVs, it's a really regular problem, unfortunately. Um, so, I had a quick go at um, using the old school oscilloscope that I had, but the sample rate just wasn't fast enough. So I went out, well, I saved up first of all, went out and I bought one of these. Now this is made by Pico. It's uh, a PC-based oscilloscope. It's called a Picoscope. And this is the Pico Picoscope 2000 series. And it's actually quite inexpensive. I will say cheap because these things are actually very, very high quality. Um, and the Pico have been making scopes for many, many years. And when I uh, came across this one, and, and the price here in New Zealand was just over 200 New Zealand dollars. And I thought, wow, that's, that's actually really affordable for, you know, not just a workshop, but for individuals as well. And it, um, so I thought, I'll get one of these and have a play around with it. And um, in the last few weeks, I've managed to gather up um, a number of fans from a particular ATV. And um, now obviously, the vast majority of those fan motors were seized solid and had failed completely and really they're no use to me at all. And you'll see on a previous video the same thing happened, I think it was on a Yamaha Viking uh, that I worked on probably about oh, a year ago now, where I actually did an autopsy on the fan. It, it had failed, we did all the diagnostics on the vehicle to prove it was the fan motor that had failed. So then I drilled the spot welds out and took the fan apart and we had a look to see what damage the water ingress had caused. And feel free to watch that video, and I'll put you a link, if I remember, at the bottom of this, uh, the, uh, the description of this video. But I thought, I need a, a scope that's got a really high sample rate, so that it can actually give me an amperage draw for each of the windings as they're connected to the brushes as that commutator rotates. And, you know, any, any points of high resistance should show as a drop in amperage draw. What I also needed to do is know a known good. So I went out and got a brand new fan that matches um, the ones off this ATV. And they're all from the same bike and they're all made by the same manufacturer. So this is really quite a good comparison test with a you know a final aim really to be able to go up to a bike when I'm servicing it, put the amp clamp onto uh, one of the wires, use the positive wire, that doesn't really matter too much, uh, lead, uh, feeding the fan motor let the fan fire up or maybe energize it manually off a battery and then take a reading uh, and compare that that graph that amperage draw line to a known good and make a decision from there you know is this fan really in good enough state to be able to go back on the bike or continue on the bike and be used until the next service because what I don't want is a customer going out on his bike when I've serviced it uh, and then the fan failing because you know that's that potentially can cause some very serious engine damage if they continue to ride the bike. So, I was also thinking, you know, how am I going to film this? Because the Picoscope is PC, is laptop based, and what I don't want to be doing is holding a camera looking at the screen on the laptop because, you know, we get problems of glare and all that kind of stuff. So I actually managed to find online some software which allows me to screen capture whatever the, 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 the laptop's got on the screen, it'll record. And it also records uh, audio, so I can do a voiceover as I'm using the software. I thought, wow, this is all coming together really well. So it definitely rendered uh, me doing a video on it. 
and I hope you find this interesting. Um, so without further ado, let's um, get everything wired up. And I did use, had to also get a little 60 amp maximum amp clamp. And just for reference, we're going to use the, the 1 millivolt to 10 milliamp setting, which means that on the graph on the screen, 1 volt equals 10 amps of draw, obviously DC, because it's a DC fan. Um, so let's get things fired up. I'm going to take you across to the laptop. I'm going to fire up, uh, I'll show you the software, the screen capture software first, uh, and then we'll move on and launch the Pico Scope. Then we will, uh, well, we'll test the first new fan. So the first fan, the brand new one, is still in its cowl, and it's very important we test all the fans in cowls because it will make a difference on the load on the motor. So this is the brand new one. I'm going to fire it up and we'll see uh, see what kind of amperage drawer it has, and if that fluctuates too much between the segments uh, on the armature, the actual uh, the windings. Right here we go. Okay, so until we launch the screen capture software, we can't actually use it. So uh, for this screencast, it's called, which is really good, you've got to uh, have internet connection. So we'll launch that, and hopefully we'll have internet connection right now. There we go, look, and we can go start recorder. So we'll click on there. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. It's really cool. Okay, and it should give us somewhere down in the bottom corner. Uh, a little screen where we can click record. So we'll click on there, look. Brilliant. And it'll count down for us. Three, two, one. Here we go. So everything now on the screen is being recorded, as is my voice. So we can minimize that. And then what I need to do next is plug in the scope. Right, so we'll plug in the USB first, get the scope fired up. It goes in there. There we are, look. I don't use it very much. Right, and then we can plug in the amp clamp, which goes on there, look. Good stuff. Right, that's all set up now for us. Okay, so we're now recording using the screen matic and we can launch the Picoscope, which is that one there, look. Right. Now, once it's launched, we need to change a few of the settings so that it's going to work with the, uh, the voltage and so on that we want. This is like basically just a standard kind of output from the amp clamp. It's absolutely useless to us. So what we need to do is change, first of all, the divisions of uh, time. So we'll go for 200 milliseconds. Ooh, overshot, there we go, 200 milliseconds. And I want a sampling speed of 5,000 samples a second. So let's just bring that down a bit. There we go. Okay. Now we also need, we've got DC volts, which is good. And we're going to go for a scale of one volt plus or minus. There we go, look. Wonderful. So that's just a bit of noise going on. So we'll turn the scope, sorry, we'll turn the, uh, the amp clamp on. And that's now on one millivolt per 10 milliamps. So that basically works out to be 10 amps per volt on your screen. You can see we've got positive one volt here and negative one volt down there, look. Right, let's wire up that fan. Okay, so we've got the uh, the plug on the fan. The blue wire is the positive feed. So we can plug our positive feed into there. And uh, the black is obviously a ground, so we can plug that into there. It's really important to get a good connection. Don't miss the miss the terminal. There we go, look. And we'll put our amp clamp on with it in the correct direction, which is that way. There we go. Onto the positive feed wire. And we can turn on the fan. So to turn on the fan, all we do is connect the wire, the, the ground wire. There we go. And the fan's now working. Okay, so there we go. Press play. And we're going to get a reading. And once we've got a couple of, couple of screens worth, we can just Stop the recording. Oh, hang on. Let me just near the end of the screen. Stop the recording. There we go. Wonderful. Right, we'll turn the fan off. Great job. Right, let's take a look at the uh, the result. Right. So what we can do now? This is a bit obviously. You know, you can't really see what's going on. But uh, what we can do now 
being touch screen and all that is we can just zoom in just keep bringing it down and we can see the draw it's pretty damn cool isn't it okay so what we're looking for is minimum and maximum plus the shape of the waveform so let's just do minimum and maximum first so looking across the line we've got a peak just where's the mouse gone there we are i've got a peak just here and another one there and by the looks of it that one is about the largest so yeah we'll use that so now we can bring that down we'll just zoom in a bit more there we go look we do jump around a bit as the maximum one and that's giving us uh, if we convert that to the amperage we've got 8.54 amps as a maximum just write all that down there we go look and then if we look down here as a as a minimum there's one look just line it up with a with a line we've got seven point one two amps one two amps and that's our minimum draw and we also need to look at the actual line itself let's bring it down a bit there we go look do it on the screen and obviously each of these peaks is, uh, as, I, as far as I understand it, amperage flow around one of the windings, or maybe a pair of windings if the, um, if the brushes make contact with two commutator points at the same time momentarily. So we've got the amperage draw here, look, going along. And if we zoom out a little bit, it's actually, you know, between 8.5 and 7. So we've got a fluctuating amperage draw of about 1.5 amps fluctuation. 1.4 actually, so 1.4 amps fluctuation. And that's on a known good fan. Okay, so we've got we've captured that now, and we've captured it at 5,000 um, samples a second, so that's definitely fast enough to be able to capture all the, you know, as the, um, the brushes make contact with each of the pairs of um, commutators, pickups. Okay, so just while the old screen matic is basically publishing that file and converting it into a, an MP4, um, we can now remove that known good fan from the rig and we can put the first of two, um, what I consider you know, fans that have been out in service for a while, um, they have been replaced because um, well, we think that they weren't working too well, but we weren't able to basically test it to this kind of degree. So I'll get that rigged up. And then we'll take some readings from the from that fan there, from the uh, you know, the first test fan, so to speak. Here we go. Right, so we'll just unplug that. Get a good one. Brand new fan. There we go. Now what I'm, I'm laying them down on a piece of wood because I'm actually trying to get the motor to work a little bit harder because uh, hopefully that will you know um, show any major problems. It will highlight any points of resistance in that fan so we can put the earth back on which is the black wire dum 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 there we go and the positive onto there excellent blue yep yeah, that's great give it a quick test excellent now this one as you can probably already hear has got uh, it's very noisy and uh, the the front bearing has obviously had water in it and it's caused that bearing to pit and uh, to get a little bit of play on it as well. Okay, so we know that there's water been inside this motor because obviously the bearing has, has failed. Right, so we've now got fan one, the first of the two uh, sample fans that come off vehicles, and we can now take a recording. So press play. So we're now capturing. We'll start the fan up. We get a full screen. Excellent, right. Turn the fan off. Let's bring this down again on the screen. And let's look for the highest peak. As you can see, you're instantly looking at this graph. The, uh, the line is all over the place. Now that looks like a peak. That one there, look, it's pretty high. 
bring it down a bit. Yeah, so that's about the highest one. So we'll zoom in on that. And we'll bring it down just in line. There, look, so we've got the maximum amperage draw of 8.9 amps. Okay, so maximum 8.9 amps. Maximum. And let's have a look and see what we've got as a minimum. Well, I would say that one down there looks pretty, pretty low. Let's zoom in on that. Be careful with these touch screens. Okay, there we go. And that gives us a minimum of 5.35 amps. So 5.35 amps minimum. Golly, what does that give us a fluctuation then? Well, the fluctuation, basically, if we round up to 5.4, just to be conservative, uh, 5.4 to 8.4, that's 3. 3.5 so a fluctuation is now 3.5 amps now remember on the known good fan we had a 1.4 amp fluctuation so that's a good indication there right okay let's rig up fan 2 and take a sample from that one right so we've got here fan 2 now this one, when it came off a vehicle, was actually seized up. I managed to just free it off, and it does actually still run, so we can get some results from that, which is really good. Pop that down there, which is on the fully sealed on the actual wood, because otherwise we'll get different readings. And we'll wire it up, so uh, now then, where's the black? There's the black, and adjust ground, and positive on there. Excellent. Just double check it's still working. Brilliant. Okay, so we're all set to take some readings again. We're just going to wait for the old uh, picoscope to, not the picoscope, the screen matic to finish rendering that last file for us. Okay, so we're all set now to take a reading on the next fan. So we'll start the recording and then we'll connect the fan. There we go. Just bring that down a bit. And we've got a full screen, we'll press stop. There we go, brilliant. Right, fan off. Okay, and what have we got? Well, we're looking for peaks. So, I think I could be wrong, but that one there looks pretty high compared to the others. Yep. So, we'll just zoom in on that one. Now, I think it was that one there, wasn't it? Very easy to lose them when you. using touch screen. Right, so we've got a maximum draw of 7.3 amps on fan 2. So 7.3 maximum. And then for a minimum, what have we got? Let's have a look. I'd say probably either that one or that one. There's not a lot in it, so golly, that doesn't really matter too much. So we'll just bring that one across. Oh, hang on. I've got one down here. Look, this is much lower. Right, so let's zoom in on that. Again, there we go. Look. And that's giving us 4.46 amps. 4.46 amps minimum fluctuation. Okay, so that's uh, 3, 2.9, 2.84. 2.84 fluctuation. Cool. Right, and how does the line look? Well, it's pretty much all over the place. Let's bring back in fan one. We can open that file, I think. Oh, I better save this first, I suppose. No, we can't. Okay, so we'll just uh, 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 file. Oh, come on. We go up, open, and fan one. Oh, yeah, known good fan. Okay, so we'll bring that in. Open. Now, this is a recording I did previously. And you can see there, look, just how much. Hang on, I think we've got the wrong one. I'll open. Let's try again. 
uh, 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 oh yeah, at 5,000 samples, that's correct. Okay, so you can see there, look. I'll just bring that down. Just how much less erratic the amperage drawer is. It's a lot smoother line, a lot less fluctuation going on. So we know that that's a known good fan, and then obviously we've got a couple of readings now that show fans that are not particularly all that good. If you open another one, what we've just done now with a rear warm bush, you can see the difference, it's all over the place. Yeah, fan one. Dunk. Again, all over the place. Going back to the known good. Far, far better, isn't it? And it's this kind of information that's going to really help me to decide whether a fan should be changed or not. Looking at the minimum, maximum, the variation of amperage draw. And of course, you know, the, the, the shape of the line, the actual drawer itself, because um, on those other ones, they were all over the place. You know, it was uh, pretty bad. It just means it's, it's far more of a conclusive way of making sure that fan's in good working order. So just looking at the readings that we took, on the known good fan, then maximum about eight and a half amps draw down to just over seven so about one and a half amps fluctuation on the readings and uh, you know we know that's a known good it's a brand new fan out of the box we had the two suspect fans one uh, basically had an 8.9 uh, amperage draw which is a little bit higher could be that the bearing was a bit you know a bit more load on the uh, provided by the bearing more resistance so the fans have been working motors and work it harder um, but the amperage dropped right down to 5.35 minimum which indicates that there's points of high resistance um, maybe between the brush and the commutator. So again, indication that there's maybe you know, some kind of corrosion going on in there, which all we're looking for is water ingress on these kind of things. Uh, and on fan two, it was even worse. Yes, sure, we got 7.3 amps maximum draw, but the minimum was 4.46. So that fan's doing even less work uh, at some points during its revolution. Now, if they're not drawing the amperage, then they're not moving as much air. And if they're not moving as much air, then of course they aren't cooling the engine as well as they should do. So that's what the readings mean. You know, we, we get to see the line uh, and what uh, and how smooth that line is, how regular the, the graph is, would indicate the good good motor. And on the other two, the, the two that come off the bikes, um, you know, quite erratic kind of uh, current flow going on which uh, indicates that there's discrepancies between each of the commutators, each of the windings on the armature is basically essentially drawing a different amount of amperage uh, and you know we all know what controls amperage and that's resistance so conclusive proof that the fan motor 1 and 2 that came off the bikes are both problematic and most definitely made the right call to change them because to change a fan you know it's going to fail at some point in the future anyway so why not change it before it actually fails and save the engine. So there you go, a really, really easy way and very informative way of checking a, basically, a DC electric motor. Now, I'm no electrical engineer by any means. I'm just really a mechanic. I fix stuff. But it interests me in finding better ways and new ways of, um, of diagnosing problems. And using a scope is incredibly useful. And these these scopes can be used for all sorts of stuff, and this is a really basic kind of way of using one, I suppose, um, applying it to, to a fan motor. But, um, you know, when it's something as critical as a cooling fan, and when you've only got one on the bike, and the rider tends to go off into the middle of nowhere, they're highly unlikely to, to leave the bike where it is and walk back to base. They're usually far more inclined to ignore the overheat warning light, which, is, which usually comes on, and try and make it back and um, what that happen what happens is the engine runs too hot and of course it can cause mechanical damage to the engine it can cause a head gasket to fail it gets crushed it fails and then it ends up being a really expensive repair so 
from a service perspective, it's actually a really good way of, uh, of checking these fans and probably any other kind of motor, I suppose. Um, so I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, it was only a really short video, um, but it's highlighted a couple of things. Um, it, just how affordable scopes are nowadays. That a, well, a few things actually, a PC based scope is incredibly useful to use on your laptop. You know, I don't have the same problems of the battery going flat on the old scope. It's far, far more detailed. It's actually a hell of a lot easier to use as well. Far easier for students to understand uh, if you're teaching somebody how to use a scope. Um, because, you know, I've gone into many, many garages over the years and I've asked them, you know, have you got a, an oscilloscope? And 95% oh, of them are like, Nah, sorry mate, I wouldn't have a clue how to use one. Uh, and, you know, because of that, they've never tried to use one and they don't realise what the benefits are. Sure, you could use a multimeter, you know, set on amps to measure the current flow of the fan, but all you're going to get really is a very minorly fluctuating reading. I mean, the, the sample rate of a, a multimeter is, you know, crap in comparison to an oscilloscope. You know, we were taking 5,000 samples a second there, and I can take a lot more than that with this one. It's, it's pretty good. I think it goes up to um, 20,000 or something, I don't know. Just, just phenomenal amount of sample rates, which means you can get a really detailed signal reading. What was also really useful, and I hopefully demonstrate on this video, is the use of that screenomatic software. So, I mean, I watch loads of other YouTube videos. I watch uh, Ivan at, uh, was it, Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics, I think it is. Uh, I watch uh, Eric O down at South Main Auto, uh, and they all basically use the video camera to film the screen on the laptop, whether it's a, a scanner or whether it's an oscilloscope or whatever it is that they're using on the laptop, the screen, uh, and they get loads of problems of glare. Well, you know, Ivan, Eric, anybody else out there, $15 New Zealand it cost me uh, no, $15 US it cost for a year's subscription of the Screenomatic. Uh, it's free actually, you can download it, but you do get a watermark on the screens. So if you pay that minuscule amount of money, then you get rid of the watermark, and it gives you lots more features too. So for you guys out there as well, give it a go, because it, man, it really, really works well, and it's going to help your viewers to see really, very clearly on the screen what it is that you're doing. Of course, it does require a bit more editing, so that tends to take a bit of time for all of us. You know, if you're going to make a video, make it properly. Go on, Ivan, raise your game a bit. You can do it. <laughs> you're a busy man, just like I am, so um, it's very difficult to find time to edit. Right, so there you go. Uh, Laptop-based oscilloscope, screen matic and we used the example of testing fan motors and the amperage draw, and we could see very clearly the differences between basically a motor that's been damaged by water ingress and what that amperage draw um, reading should look like on a known good. Okay, well, you've been watching the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. If you found it helpful, and you'll find many, many, many other videos on the channel, why not subscribe? Click on subscribe, tick the box, and, uh, sorry, you'll see a little gear icon, click on that, and then tick the box, and you'll get notifications as and when I upload any new videos. You'll also find me on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. Uh, so, you know, feel free to communicate through any of those portals if you like. However, uh, comments, please, if you could, via the YouTube channel, because that's where the videos are, and it's far. I think it's a lot more sense to have the, have the comments down there. All right, chaps. Well, uh, if any of you are interested in purchasing one of these Picoscopes, then uh, you can contact me. I'm not an agent, but uh, if you've got any questions or queries that we to try and help you out with, uh, I, do, I have now got a contact here in New Zealand. And, of course, there are agents all over the world. So I would strongly recommend these as a really, really useful addition to your workshop. You know, when you think you spend thousands and thousands of dollars on scan, scan tools and so on, you know, what's a few hundred dollars on a scope? Really? All right, chaps. Cheers. Over and out.